Hello, this is Lonnie Stark of Stark Silver Creek and we're here at the entrance of Napa Valley. Behind me is a statue, a bronze statue called the Grape Crusher. That is a familiar statue here ever since 1987 when it was erected uh, by artist Gino Miles as a tribute to all of the laborers that work on the vineyards. On this particular tour of Napa where we have some exciting things we'll be doing. One is a private tasting at the Franciscan Winery. We'll also be doing a tour of the Taste of Yachtville, and I'm sure we'll catch some other interesting stories and adventures along the way. So let's go and spend a day in Napa. Uh, Janet Myers is the winemaker at Franciscan. She's been with us since 2003. Okay. She's been our director of winemaking since 2005. And uh, she's worked pretty much all over the world and uh, has a really fine hand at making Cabernet and Bordeaux style wines. I see, so that's she's, her. That She's fantastic. She has control of the Franciscan wines as well as Mount Beter. So dealing with valley floor fruit and mountain fruit, which are completely two different yes. animals and very, very much different in the way that you treat them in the winery and, yeah. and how you actually put them together after fermentation and aging. Yeah. Um, and she has two associate winemakers, Jay Turnipseed and Michael Eckstein, who are just fantastic. The three of them together just really sure. help to make yeah. our wines vibrant and full and rich, but still really supple and really approachable. We're just a little ways away from bud break. Okay. And as you're looking down at these um, cuttings from where our vineyard crew came through, and cut off all of the old shoots from last year's crop. That's what the, the grape clusters actually grew on last year. Yeah. So you can actually see that there is sap rising in the vines. And the buds here and here are starting to swell, mm -hmm. which means that just in a few days, maybe weeks, the leaves will start bursting out. And that's that's really, that's when we start, you know, start yeah. thinking about harvest. Mm -hmm. um, mentioning that our vineyard is actually sustainably farmed, you can see that there is what looks like weeds in between yeah. the vines. And <laughs> what it actually is, is a, is a very specific blend of plants that help to maintain the integrity of the soil. Okay. In many different ways. They help to uh, add nutrients at the end of their life cycle. We'll mow them over and they'll go back into the ground and, and put sure. back into the vineyard. They also help to absorb some excess water. You can see the ground is actually still pretty wet. We've had a very wet February, which is fantastic. Yeah. The way that you can kind of tell that the vines are starting to wake up in addition to that is that the days are warmer, the nights are warmer, and as that soil temperature moves up past a certain yeah. point, that really gets the, the vines the initiative to go, oh, hey, it's time time to wake up. We have a 240-acre parcel in Oakville. Uh, wow. It's on Oakville Crossroad, and that's really our, our heart for, for our red mm -hmm. wines. Um, we've been making wines from that vineyard since 1975 and we are really proud of our location and our vineyard practices. Uh, we have such prestigious neighbors as Silver Oak and yes. Opus One. A cute little phrase that people say around in Napa is to make a small fortune in the yes. wine business and you need to, just to start with a large fortune. Yes. Because even if you make fantastic wine, there's no guarantee that somebody's going to drink it. It's missing one so now that we've seen our vineyards and we've talked about where our grapes come from, yeah. let's see what happens when they get to the winery. Great, let's go. So this is actually not part of our typical tour, but I wanted to show you our crush pad. And it basically takes the grapes off of the clusters and it crushes them a little bit. Then the at that moment it's called must and that yes. must is pumped into a tank 
and fermentation is basically started from there. Okay. There's, you know, there's some analysis the winemakers go through and they actually taste the juice and there's any sort of adjust adjustments that might need to be made and the yeast is added. Sauvignon Blanc, a very similar thing mm -hmm. happens. Um, the grapes come in, they go through and they get destemmed. Some of them get put into the press and have a certain amount of skin contact. That's where we get a really okay. amazing flavor and aroma. Uh -huh. the Sauvignon Blanc, the, most of that is in the skins. Yes. And um, so some of it gets pressed off right away. Yep. Some of it gets left in these two machines over here, which are wow. um, pneumatic presses. Uh, and then after the juice is pressed off, the winemakers, of course, are tasting the whole time. Gets The juice gets pumped into a tank, and that's when fermentation starts. Okay. So for our Cabernet and red wines, they'll come into the winery, go into a tank, and that's where they'll go through their fermentation. Okay. The Sauvignon Blanc will come through, part of it will be tank fermented, okay. part of it will go into neutral oak barrels, and with our Chardonnay, it's all barrel fermented. Okay. So I want you to notice, first off, the vast difference in size of all of our tanks. And this is just Yes. A sprinkling of them. You saw some of the larger ones outside. Mm -hmm. So it's very important when you're a winemaker, having different sizes and di even different shapes benefit different varieties. I see. So Jeez. Being, and, and, and sizes as far as how much the tank will hold. And of course, we're a larger winery, so we, we have to go to a certain level of automation. I don't want to use the exact same winemaking style every single year because yeah. the vintage is always different. Yeah. Also, people's tastes change, so being able to react very quickly to changes in the market is really important. And so our winemakers are very proactive. Um, you see these barrels here, it kind of doesn't really give you a true idea. Our volume production every year is about 240,000 cases. Wow. So we're, we're one of the largest wineries in Napa, but I, I think we make wine like a small winery. We're in one of the private tasting rooms here at the Franciscan Winery. And this is part of one of the many private tastings offered here. If you visit the winery, you can actually go to the tasting area and just try out a couple of wines. Or if you book ahead of time, do a little planning before your Napa trip, you can go on a couple of different experiences here in the back areas. One of the experiences is a sensory experience where you get to taste a couple of the different wines. You can also do your own blending as well. For example, this is their magnif 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 Magnificat. For example, this is their Magnificat. I can't pronounce it. This is their Magnificant, which is one of their um, Meritage wines, and you can actually come in for an experience where you can blend your own. Um, so this is something where you can call ahead of time, book an appointment. It takes about probably um, an hour to go through the experience, and it's a great way to learn about the wines, and especially the wines here at this Franciscan winery. Um, what's great is that you don't need to be part of the wine club to do this experience and definitely check it out. It's a beautiful setting. We have a fireplace here, um, great um, architecture, and it's a wonderful way to spend some time um, here in Napa Valley. So here's to great wine here in Napa Valley. Emily, thanks for showing us around. You're so welcome. Cheers to that. Cheers.